Welcome to News for the Food Lover. My name is Dane Richards. I'm the uh, publisher and chief judge um, at News for the Food Lover, and I've got the pleasure today of having uh, Brian Steele and uh, Jeremy Rowland with me. It's um, uh, always good to catch up with these gentlemen, and uh, with COVID, um, it's prevented that uh, over the last year, but now things have eased up. Um, we thought it's a great opportunity to talk about things that are happening in the food world, how COVID's affected um, the landscape, and, um, and talk about the art and craft of food criticism. So yeah, so the, there used to be this, you know, you experience it as it happens and you don't complain, you don't send things back. And I'm, I don't necessarily agree with that anymore because, um, you know, there's no such thing as a chef that um, isn't passionate about food and doesn't want to the food to be good. And, and as Jeremy mentioned earlier, you're there for one visit. Mm. People make mistakes. We're mm. humans. We are the weakest link. We make mistakes mm. with monotonous regularity across every part of our life. And when timing is so important in a kitchen, things can just get missed. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm reviewing a restaurant, something comes to me, to me where the, all the dishes have been solid, tight seasoning, you know, it's, there's a clear attention to detail, and something turns up where either it's a profoundly overcooked piece of fish, or it is a, a, like a red meat that has gone way beyond what I've asked for, or if there's some other problem mm -hmm. that is a clear slip, lapse, mistake in the kitchen, then I will absolutely highlight it because you want to see and Jeremy's spoken of this before it's an important part of the experience to understand how they recover because mm -hmm. they, they they should never expect they're going to get it right every time but when they get it wrong they should own it be honest about it and try and make it better and of course the easiest thing when it comes to cost of goods and when it comes to everything like that is just how you recover is more important than the mistake you've made you give them a complimentary wine you replace the dish you offer them a, a free dessert or something and people will really appreciate that and they'll remember that and it will actually reinforce a positive memory of their experience in that restaurant with something like that where they've experienced something that that they'll build because don't forget we are we don't as human beings we don't like conflict so mm -hmm. it's really difficult to actually mm -hmm. complain about something mm -hmm. and you feel it's, it's uncomfortable and you know it's uncomfortable and so people always start with like oh, I'm sorry but mm -hmm. right and so if you if you are um, empathetic and caring and careful in that inter exchange where you go I'm so sorry or absolutely and you you ask them you clarify what it is they asked for you you fix the mistake and then you maybe go look and here's we'd like you to have this glass of wine on us that has such a profound impact I think it's about how it's done too isn't it absolutely. I mean I think the attitude of how you approach that with the service staff is really yeah. important and you know I like when I do it it's, I try to give them the constructive feedback about as to why mm -hmm. Um, and then I can't control how they react to that, but I certainly can control how I convey it to them. But Jeremy, you'll, you'll I think. Well, I was going to say. I think it comes back to what we were talking about uh, a while ago, that the it, the professionalism of a true critic is that he can make distinguish between what is a true mistake mm -hmm. and what is what is just poor technique. Absolutely. If it's poor technique, I think I'd probably not complain. If it's a genuine mistake, then you owe it to the restaurant to complain, really, yeah. because. As they say, all feedback is a gift. Yeah, right. Now, how the restaurant handles that yeah. mistake, as we, as you say, the is, is the important thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If they handle it well, mm. as you said, it's great. If they handle it badly, it's going to mm. uh, yeah. affect everybody's, uh, everyone's it opinion is, yeah. of that restaurant. Because there's some great learnings there for them as well if they if they do embrace that side of it. Because. Um, it, it doesn't have to be a negative necessarily because no. it could be something that they may need to look at from their own systems yeah. or or staffing or who should be on what station or you know how that was prepped perhaps yeah. Yeah. So, so, so it's one of the one of the most important things to understand about the restaurant experience is how subliminally stressful it can be for people just walking into a restaurant to eat it's a subconscious thing but you know you are you are either we're either dealing with that as omnivores we have this constant competing neophilia and neophobia. We want to try new things, but we're afraid of new things. Yeah, and then you might not be familiar with the cuisine, and so it's, it's possible for restaurants to make people leave a restaurant feeling both frustrated and stupid because mm. they weren't they weren't you know cared for. Mm. And so walking into a restaurant that you've never been to before, where you might be um, you might be worried about the bill because it's a special mm. occasion. You might be worried about, you might be a bit concerned to say, well, when you see a word that you don't understand mm -hmm. and you don't want to ask what it means, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there are lots of stressful moments, potential stressful moments, subconscious mm -hmm. moments for customers. And it's, and, 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 and it's up to you as, as a restaurateur, as a, 
as a, and especially for the service, it's up to you to, to help them through that mm-hmm. and to expect, anticipate that so that they don't feel stupid and they don't feel stressed. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, this, you know, one of my enduring frustrations, and this is a personal opinion, um, is this um, disproportionate move to everybody deciding that share plates were going to be the way ahead. Well, all you do with a share plate, especially if it's not just a great big bowl of something that you can spoon onto your plate, a la a family meal, all you do is introduce stress. Someone this is it. has to cut it up. <laughs> Someone has to dish it out, right? Yeah. If you go back to, we, we've talked about history, you go back to history far mm. enough, predating the birth of the restaurant mm. post-revolutionary Paris, mm. they went from what was called service à la française at the time to service à la russe. So they went from French service to Russian service. French service, bunch of stuff on the table, help yourself. Russian service, you get everything on your own plate. Mm. So the, the biggest, the, the most risky move a restaurant can ever make is going, yes, our dishes are designed to share when they're not. Mm. I can give you an example. I was there with, there were four of us at dinner and they said, you should, this dish is awesome to share. And it was a soup. With one muscle, <laughs> one prawn, and like, yep. These things have a are really, really important to consider because, as, as Jeremy emphasised, and as have I, restaurants are more are way more than the food, and the the fears and the emotions and the stresses that can be generated by a simple act of eating are incredibly disproportionate to what you expect when you're thinking, oh, it is a restaurant. It's not e- just a Even restaurant. in restaurants where they tell you it's sharing and yes. you, you accept it's sharing, the two of you sitting there yep. and they send out something with three, three elements. Three, absolutely. Right? Yep. So, so right. <laughs> what, what, what's, what's important there, if the restaurant can actually reverse the lens back to the dining, the dining, the diner, yep. then they can look at that and then shape it. I think a lot of them don't sort of reverse the lens around and say, well, I'm sitting here eating the food that I'm going to serve. Sure. Where are my touch points? You know, yeah. and, and I think it's simply if they just looked at it a different way, they're much like we can do too yeah. from reviewing restaurants. Yeah. It provides a, a, a different um, view. Now talking about um, from the flip side of sending a dish back to some of the real joyful, the joy of reviewing restaurants, um, for someone who's about to start out, can we talk about um, that side of it? What, what for yourself, Jeremy? Well, I think you know, I think eating out should be a joy anyway. Mm. So, so, so there are elements of what yeah. is jo- enjoyable and what mm. isn't. But yeah, I mean, there are times when you just everything comes together really, really yeah. well, and the food is just sublime. And as a professional food critic, unfortunately, you've still got to be professional. Mm. So, so you sort of you, know, you can. You know, compliment the chef, compliment the waiter, etc. Mm. That you walk out of that restaurant without necessarily being too over the top, mm. but you will write a review that's obviously very mm. glowing. Um, but uh, I, I, yeah, I think the restaurant should know eventually mm. that it was very good, but I don't mm. know necessarily. You tell them immediately from a, from a professional reviewing point of view. Yeah. If you're if you're there as a as a guest, you should tell someone that it's really good. You should compliment mm. them yeah, because as again, it's feedback. It's positive feedback, mm. and um, uh, it, they should take it. They, they should be able to, how they handle that is also important, you know, if the shift comes out and actually talks to you about it, it might, you know, it's probably more more valuable than if you're just talking to the waitress or whatever. Mm. I always find too, like a, an exceptional experience sits with me beyond two or three days, you know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's still, there, there's some dishes now I can remember to 10 years ago, mm. like exceptional experiences, you know, where I had a flawless experience, I can almost replay the whole meal in my mind or where I saw a near perfect service. It's a, it's a thing well, of beauty. Food and memory are very know. closely associated. Yeah. The, the olfactory parts of your mm. nose where you, uh, where you actually detect most of the aromas is next door to the memory section. Yeah. And, and they, are, they do overlap. And memories are really quite strong. You, you remember people by, sometimes by the food, your mother's apple pie, you know, somebody mm. else's yeah. this. Yeah. You yeah. went to a fabulous place in Italy because they had this great you know, truffle pasta. It's, it, and, and the memories come back because of the food. And it can work the other way too. I have a friend who's, who was very, very sick with some food and every time she eats the same food, she feels sick, mm-hmm. regardless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the memories can be both positive yeah. and negative. But with a really good meal, yeah, the memories are really It always good. becomes like a culinary alphabet. It's the, yeah. that, that power of sense, memory and place. And, and then when you get a restaurant who's really, really smart and they interweave a, mm-hmm. a, a narrative in their mm. menu and then that, that's when it goes next level. So, Brian, the joys of reviewing the Look, I mean, when it's, when it's um, I mean, as someone who is just passionate about food mm. in general and, and also with, a, with an interest in both history um, and, and human factors and, and behaviour and memory mm. and 
Um, it's just uh, I, I enjoy my most enjoyable meals are the ones where you know you you get to the end and um, it's it's like an effortless mm. um, journey of yeah. both experience and enjoyment. Mm. And Which the time and of course going quickly. Exactly yeah. right. And so and it, and it's one of those things where you then know um, that you can only get to that point if every if they've managed to get everything right. Mm. And so when you get to those those effortless experiences where the wait staff um, have. have have managed to largely anticipate all of the things that you Chewitous wanted service, or yeah. required. Um, the food comes out well paced, um, and the dishes are both exciting and comforting mm. and, and and interesting. And of course, because it's, it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's it's a slightly, it's not supposed to be a negative word, but you know, eating can be visceral in mm. the experience it evokes mm. from memory, from smell, mm. um, both in terms of the, your, your own history, your family, mm. what you like to eat, what you don't like to eat, and then how, how you, you know, which part of you know, the, the, the taste and flavor excites you. Um, and so it's a, it's a deeply personal experience with, with so many things that can influence it, ranging from sound to, you know, to memory. Um, and so getting that right, and when a restaurant gets that right, it's an incredibly impressive thing mm. because if you've got 60 people in your restaurant, there are 60 different people mm. with 60 different mm. memories, 60 different mm. palettes, 60 different backgrounds. Mm. That's, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's impressive when, when, that, when that model um, works. And, and it's important to understand that 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 comes from incredible education, incredible focus, and incredible hard work across a, a disparate team of people that are dealing with humans to people that are dealing with stuff. Mm. Mm. The chefs in the kitchen are dealing with stuff. The people in the front of the house are dealing with people and emotions and communication. Mm. And those are two independent mm. things that have to join and yes. overlap mm. to make that experience where someone walks in mm and wanting to have something, enjoy a meal with loved ones or on their own, and then be able to, you know, have that experience and then leave happy with the price they've paid and the time they've taken and the experience they've had. Yeah. Yeah. Well, lucky in many ways, I mean, I've always said that uh, a restaurant is the sum of its small parts, Absolutely. just from what you were talking yeah. about there, yeah. but it's also uh, an industry, you know, full of uh, amazing people and, um, I've always said about hospitality, how incredibly generous they are in adversity and, yep. and you know, what, what industry works these hours under this particular amount of pressure? And sometimes I'll say to reviewers, have a think about the, the time window of where things can go wrong from execution in the kitchen to your table. It's very small, you know, and uh, it can be, you know, the difference of an overcooked piece of fish can be 15, 30 seconds. So, there's so much makes up of it, and that's what I find fascinating. It's very much a passion business. It you know, is. The, 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 the chefs are artists, or the good chefs are really artists. They're passionate about their product. They don't, they don't do it just because they're there for the money. They do it because of the passion. Um, and it's, you know, it needs that passion throughout the whole part of the system to keep it going. Yeah. But it can be very passionate, very emotional. People get very excited about food. They get um, yeah. excited about bad food. They get excited about good food. They'll tell their friends. It, it's it's very much a passion. Yeah. It's unlike a lot of other businesses, which yeah. you're just buying a service or a, or a product. And it makes it, it and that, that that introduces that very that basic facet of of the industry is what introduces all of the risk. Mm. Because over here, say it's a business, and you're there to make money. But very few people go into the restaurant industry without passion, mm. and passion is 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 heavy. You know, there's the different part of the brains we're talking about here. You know, a great restaurant experience is is is, is tapping into all of your dopamine receptors. That's mm. why that's what you're trying to do with people. Is they they make them feel good. Mm. But the passion and the passion that can be generated can also narrow the focus. Mm. So there's so much risk, and there are so many single points of failure in the restaurant mm. world because you have to be good at so many things attention to detail and a nuance and balance and technique in the kitchen and a deep understanding of human behavior nonverbal communication and you know and and movement and logistics in the front of house and they all come with their own individual elements of risk and they all come with their single points of failure that you if you take the eye of your eye off the ball once because one of those things that if you drop the ball on one of those things it can impact everything else mm -hmm.